The study of ecology is the study of the living things in their environment. This goes over the levels of organization within our environment. Ecology is the study of the relationships between biotic and abiotic factors in the environment. Eco is the prefix that means home or abode. For example, eco-climate or ecosystem, ecotourism. Ology is a, the suffix that means the study of. Zoology is the study of animals. Epidemiology or climatology, which would be the study of climate. Within the ecosystem, the smallest level of organization is the individual living thing, which is called the organism. So any one of these mallard ducks would be the smallest level of organization. If you put a group of mallard ducks that live in the same area, that would be called a population. Populations are always composed of the same species of organism. So this graphic over here represents all of these are ducks. They all have differences, of course, but they are a population because they are all the same species. If you take all of the populations that live together in an area, it becomes the community. This includes only the living things, but it includes plants and animals and bacteria and fung fungus and microorganisms like you see in the picture. Then when you take that community and add the physical factors in an area, it becomes the ecosystem. For example, the rotting log and the koi pond, the lake, the dirt, a field, an old maple tree, plus all of the living things in that area would become the ecosystem. Ecosystems are grouped into biomes. Biomes are large areas that have a particular climate with certain species of plants and animals living there. The plants and animals that live in a particular biome are there because they, they can withstand whatever climate it is. So if you look at where we're located, we're located in the temperate deciduous forest biome. If you look into the northern part of North America through Canada, this is the boreal coniferous forest area. And then if you go down here to the equator, the map shows that the equator has mostly tropical evergreen and tropical deciduous rainforests. Then everything that falls into the biosphere is, is living within the part of the earth that supports life. Biotic factors are anything that's living in the ecosystem. This includes plants, animals, fungi, and microorganisms, like bacteria. Biotic is the root word for life. Like biology is the study of life. Biostatistics is, the, is looking at living statistics. Biography, biotechnology, biosphere, biomechanics, and biotic, and biofeedback. Some examples of biotic factors include plants, fungi, and animals. Abiotic factors are things that are not living, but they do interact with the biotic factors in an area, like the air, the water, the soil, the temperature, the wind, and whatever abiotic sources of energy there are, such as the sun. Abiotic, the prefix a, means not or without like atoxic is without toxins, amoral without morals, abiotic, amusia. Some examples of abiotic factors in an area could be fire, sunlight, or the dirt, soil, rocks that living things interact with. We study ecology using observations, experiments, and especially modeling. Anything that's represented by a graph right here is a model. These are created by humans in order to help them make predictions about the environment or the ecosystem. But sometimes you have to be cautious about how you use a model to make those predictions. For example, if you look at the model here on this slide, 
This represents the number of years um, that a human is and the height that they would be at each year. So if you look carefully, you can see at three years old, the person would be about two feet in height. However, the way this is modeled, if you looked at someone when they were 30, which is off the graph here, it, this model predicts that a person who's 30 would be 22 feet tall. The model doesn't account for people growing more slowly as they reach adolescence and beyond.